Okay, solve this system. We are not told that we need to use any particular method. And since we see right off the bat here that the x's will cancel and the z's will cancel when we add these first two equations together, that's what we're going to do. Adding them together, we get 2y is equal to 10. And therefore, we know right off the bat y will equal 5. Okay, well, let's somehow get equation 3 involved. And I think what I'm going to do is rewrite, I need another equation, so rewrite the first one with a 5 in there where this y is. So that becomes 5, and I really have x plus 5 plus z is 4. So if I subtract that 5 to the other side, that first equation becomes x plus 5 plus z equals 4, but I don't really like it that way, so I'm going to rewrite that instead as x plus z equals negative 1. And I'm going to do the same thing here, substitute 5 into that bottom equation. That will give us 2x plus 15 plus z is equal to 16, and subtract that 15 to the other side will give us 2x plus z equals 1. Now all we need to do is eliminate these z's. I'm going to multiply that first equation through by negative 1, so I can cancel out here. And that will give us negative x minus z is equal to ne positive 1. And the bottom equation will be 2x plus z is equal to 1 also. Adding down, we have x is equal to 2. We already know y is equal to 5. We need z. So 2 plus something is negative, is negative 1. So that must be 2 plus negative 3. Therefore, z will equal negative 3. And our solution will be 2, 5, negative 3 for this problem. Finally, we're being asked to solve using Kramer's rule. And we will need to find the value of determinant d. d will contain the coefficients to the left of the equal sign. So the first column is negative 2 and 3. The second column is 1 and negative 5. So evaluating this determinant, one diagonal is 10. The other diagonal is 3, but I change it to a negative 3. And so the value of d is 7. I always do that first because I want to make sure that it's not 0. Because if I were dividing by 0 when I create Kramer's rule, we'd have some problems. But as we know, this will be something over 7, comma, something over 7. And I need dx and dy for those two numerators. So let's begin by finding dx. dx will have the 10 and the negative 290 in that first column with the 1 and negative 5 in the second column. And dz, sorry, dy, will keep the first column as negative 2 and 3, but bring the 10 and negative 290 down to the second column. Here we go. Multiplying diagonals, we're going to have negative 50 and positive 290 after the sign change, giving us 240. So there we go, 240. And the second time, we're going to have 580 and minus 30, which will give us 550. So that will be the second numerator. Now, these don't reduce. So that right there is our solution set. Now, we look at it and we go, ooh, yuck. I don't like that. So let's check it and see if it works. And I know we don't like checking with fractions, but you know we got to do this every once in a while. So the first equation was negative 2x. So that becomes negative 2 times 240 over 7 plus y, which is 550 over 7. Question mark, is that equal to 10? OK, yuck, we don't like that. Let's see what we've got. We have negative 480 over 7 plus 550 over 7. Now subtracting, we get 70 over 7. That's a negative, no, that's a positive 70 over 7, which is equal to 10. 
So it does work in the first equation. Let's check it in the second equation. 3x, that becomes 3 times 240 over 7 minus 5 times 550 over 7. Question mark, is that equal to negative 290? Okay, another mess we have here. 3 times 240, well, that will be 720 over 7 minus 2,750 over 7. Okay, let's take a look at that. We know it's going to be over 7. When we subtract, we're going to have 2,030 divided by 7, which is, sorry, that's negative, which is equal to negative 290, and yes, that is the solution to the system. It's no fun checking fractional answers, but as you can see, if I'm willing to do it, you should be willing to do it too. Okay, I can't tell you to do something I'm not willing to do myself. Good luck, everybody.